Good morning. Well, yesterday's video was all about the five reasons that I think it's challenging having a business of your own. So today I thought I'd take you on a day in my business so you can see what it actually looks like as a midlife business owner, freelancer, coach, do my own thing. Um, I've got a few things on today. I've just finished editing a video and I've done some emails this morning. I've also had my breakfast and now I'm just going to take off all the stripes. I didn't realise how many stripes I was wearing. I'm getting ready because I'm going to head out to see a friend of mine, a business colleague that I met a few years ago during the pandemic. And we've stayed in touch all of this time, which is lovely. And we're just having a catch up. Um, but I do have work to do as well. And that's one of the benefits, I guess, of being self-employed or remote working or whatever you want to call it is that got hair anyone else find that as they get older putting makeup on when you haven't got your glasses on is more luck than judgment i'm literally just a little bit of mascara a little bit of foundation we're going to get together just for a catch up but i have got some work to do so i've got a coaching client this afternoon and i've also got a group coaching session for my membership later this afternoon so I'm going to be taking my laptop with me because I haven't really got time in between everything to get from one place to another hot spotting from my phone no doubt because I very much doubt I'll get a decent signal minimal effort when it comes to getting ready these days look at this this is my favorite lipstick and there's virtually nothing left of it and that is it that is as much as i do these days i am going to go and get dressed now it will be pretty casual so i'll catch you in a moment but i've got dressed you don't want to see that okay that's me dressed ready to go i'll see you in a moment lunch and then I had a client call a coaching session with a client and we got about halfway through about half hour in and the internet wasn't playing at all that is one of the downsides of working from a cafe sometimes the internet isn't great and normally I would hotspot to my phone and I couldn't do that either but again I think that's one of the things I really love about working for myself is I get to be responsible for the fact that that call will have to be rescheduled and I don't have a problem with that it was my failing really because I could have found somewhere with better internet but I have great relationships with my clients so she was very understanding and she was actually half an hour late to the call anyway so uh, it's give and take isn't it so the flexibility I think is one of the the best bits about working for myself I can pick and choose who I work with which is always nice and also to an extent when I work and just being able to meet up with a business friend and we've become friends and I would say the vast majority of my close friends now are actually friends that I've met through my business. I still have one very, very good friend who I've known for a long time, but I would say 90% of my friend group now I've met through my business. And I might do another video one time on 
What happens with friendships when you change direction and start working for yourself? Let me see if I can look at the camera instead of looking at my face. Because I think you will definitely gain lots of friends and they will understand what you're doing because they'll have a lot of similarities around the highs, the lows of being in business for yourself. But some of your other friends may not. Some of your other friends may resent you. You may find that you lose some friends, but you will definitely gain some. And I think the thing is, you know, that they say people come into your life for a reason, a season. Can't remember what the other bit is, off a life, maybe. And I think when you start your own business, it definitely shows who your friends really are and it's not to say that you fall out with people but they may just not get what it is you're doing and it can be really upsetting I think when you see friendships come to an end but I think it's part and parcel of working for yourself but again one of the benefits for me is the fact that I've made a whole new friendship group who really understand what we're going through so lunch today with Annette has been absolutely brilliant because I think women in particular, I, I guess I, I don't know this for sure, but I do think women are very open about what they're going through. So being able to have business colleagues who I can kind of talk through what I'm going through, some of the challenges I'm having without feeling judged, without feeling like I need to pretend that everything is brilliant. Because here's the thing about being in business for yourself, whatever you see, <laughs> On the outside, every business goes through challenges. Every, every small business goes through, in fact, every business goes through challenges. And especially if you're a one person business, it's all on you and it can be incredibly challenging at times. So having those business friends that you can open up to, confide in, vent to, I've just sent Annette a, a little quick whatsapp just to say thank you for letting me quietly vent over lunch because she gets it we have very similar experiences we both tried to build a business through a pandemic which was challenging in itself that's how we met so we have a lot of common ground and I genuinely think I've got dozens of friends that I now business friends that I could have similar conversations to that with and you cannot underestimate how important that is if you're going it alone. And it's such a, a brilliant part of being in business for yourself. One of the other massive benefits of working for myself is not having to do the daily commute. A few years ago, well actually quite a few now, about 20 years ago, I was driving to work and I hit a patch of black ice and the car spun out of control. I ended up backwards in a hedge. The car was a write-off. Miraculously, I didn't have a single scratch or a bruise, but it left me with what I, I guess you would probably call mild PTSD for around about the next 18 months to two years. And how that manifested was kind of flashback. So Anytime I hit a patch of water on the road or painted line and it made the steering feel different, I'd have a flashback and I'd have this sort of mild anxiety. Well, they weren't that mild, but I'd have an, a bit of an anxiety moment. And I didn't touch that bit of road that I'd had the accident on for nearly two years. I just couldn't face driving on it. And then on another occasion, my husband Mark and I were driving to work. We worked at the same place at this time. And again, it was winter. We were on small sort of country roads. And although we didn't skid, a van coming towards us lost control on the black ice and plowed straight into us. And, and again, miraculously, although our car was written off, we were both safe and well, although my airbag didn't go off and I had a little bit of whiplash and when the it was quite funny i guess when the policeman arrived as they do when you've had a road collision he got out of his police car 
lost his footing on the ice and went straight down on his backside. I hated the winter commute and that's one thing now that I don't have to do. Yes, I've traveled today to see my friend and it's been about an hour and 10 minutes each way, but I get to choose. I really don't miss the commute, not even one bit. Even in the summer, although the, the commute was lovely, it was still an early morning. I don't choose to get up and start my business most mornings now until around about 10 o'clock. Some mornings I'm earlier, but I get to choose when I start working. I'm not tied to that kind of nine to five, eight to five routine of, you know, commute and then do a full day's work and commute home. And that is so nice not to have to be that rigid in my days. So yeah, not having the commute is a huge bonus. And I even structure my business now so that I don't have to do a lot of driving. One of my first contracts meant that I was driving all over the UK. At one point, um, I was flown from uh, south of England right up to the north of Scotland to deliver some training. And then the next day I was flying back down to the south of England and driving down to Wiltshire in the southwest of the country. And then I had another sort of three hour, four hour commute, something like that back home. And it was, it was a lot of traveling, a lot of staying in hotels. And I realized that actually that's, that wasn't what I wanted to be doing either. So now I'm really kind of particular about any corporate work that I take on. The majority of it I try and make sure is virtual because I don't want to be doing that traveling. I find it quite stressful. Driving when you feel like you're on a tight deadline, for me at my age now, it's just, it's, it's a stressor I don't need. <laughs>